my name is Lucas Ives, and I am uh, one of the lead engineers over at Polestring. Uh, Polestring is a company that builds a platform for computer conversation. And we've been around since about 2011. Um, and it's kind of our goal to allow um, creative people and developers both to create uh, conversation, uh, you know, kind of whatever platform you want to deliver that on. So that could be a messenger chatbot, it could be um, an Alexa skill, it could be a Google Home action, cool. it could be platforms we don't even know about yet, it could be uh, an IoT device you're building in your garage. Anywhere you want to use uh, natural language as your interface to technology, that's where we want to be. Cool, cool. And have you been working in a conversation for a while, or like what, what brought you to the bot space? Like what, what yeah, I mean, since the beginning uh, of Polestring, basically, I mean, I started at the beginning of 2012. Um, the company was founded toward the you know, middle to late 2011. Were you there when it was Toy Talk as well? I was, yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so our initial, our, kind of our initial charter was to do this in the, in the family entertainment space. Um, the idea came out of a Skype call that our CEO's daughter had with uh, her grandparents. And she was Skyping with the grandparents, and then, and then they hung up, um, and then had a question for her dad, our CEO, and, which was, hey, can I Skype with Tutu, my uh, stuffed animal? I'm not sure what type of stuffed animal it was, <laughs> but it was a stuffed animal. Um, and that kind of was the seed of the idea uh, of, well, what if you could talk back to your, you know, your favorite toy? Um, what would they say? How would that work? Um, what does it mean to build a, um, an interactive conversational experience? Um, and so we built uh, a whole bunch of apps and um, even went down the consumer packaged goods road for, for kids with uh, Hello Barbie, which is probably our most well-known um, public effort. But the, along the way, we were kind of laying the tracks in front of the train as we went to build uh, a platform for creating conversation. Um, and always with the goal of having uh, the creative visionary be able to express their vision in our tool. And so when we started thinking about opening up the platform to the rest of the world, which is what we did last year, uh, we were trying to figure out, well, where, where do we sit? And we like to think of ourselves uh, the same way that you might think of, well, Photoshop is the place you go to do anything to a 2D grid of pixels. Um, Excel is the place you go if you want to nerd out about Gantt charts or spreadsheets in any sort of way. You want to come to Polestring if you want to build any sort of conversation. So that's, that's where we want to be. Cool. No, that's awesome. Um, in terms of the conversation itself, and there's been a lot of debate in the industry about like buttons or yeah, words sure. or you know like where where do you kind of fall in, in in that you know that spectrum? Like do you do you think it's words are more important or buttons or maybe they're a little bit of both or I, I think yes and I think it's totally yeah. um, application dependent. Mm -hmm. uh, you know if I'm in a transactional setting where I'm you know maybe purchasing something or trying to book a you know hotel room or something, there may be specific turns of the conversation where a button is so much faster than me, you know, spelling out, you know, um, what day of the week I want to book my hotel room or what city I want to go to. Uh, but having that interface that can also handle um, kind of out of band, free form conversational input just makes it that much more powerful uh, because it would work, it allows me to jump to other topics, it allows me to um, have an interaction more like I might have with a travel agent over the phone uh, than I had with, with a bot. Um, so I, th I think there are places for all of that stuff, and you really cool. need to carefully consider your audience for your particular application. Awesome. And in terms of the future, right? Looking looking distantly, will interfaces like her or the Star Trek computer like is that science fiction or are we is that pretty is that close? That's a that's a pretty loaded question, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I mean, I don't think we're very far away at all. For from a version of the Star Trek computer. I mean, some people might argue that, that that's going on right now, right? Mm -hmm. I have an Alexa in my house. I can you know, ask it things, and it tells me things. Uh, I remember playing around with um, a very popular uh, dictation program back you know, maybe 15 years ago and having a lot of problems with it, having to train it, having it still have a 5% you know, word error rate, which, which sounds pretty good, but then you realize that means one in 20 words. It just doesn't understand. Like, those problems are, uh, the big companies have done a very good job of addressing those problems if you are a you know, native American English speaker and it's getting better for um, folks with accents, folks in different languages, um, folks whose voices are in different frequencies, you know, children for example, it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, projecting success, that stuff is gonna be driven down to pr commodity pricing for everyone. It's yeah. just gonna work, right? So, yeah. so we like to say, okay, so 
assuming that works, what is the, the next step going to be? Yeah. And uh, I think the next step is how do you create uh, you know, compelling, useful interfaces on top of that? Um, and I really think we're there. Cool. If you look at what's happening in the, um, you know, in, the, in the space of the types of hardware that this stuff is integrated in, like following the news coming out of CES this year, um, Amazon's integrating with Whirlpool, they're integrating with Ford. I mean, you can imagine a very, you know, kind of connected, ubiquitous presence that's yeah. that's there to help you out throughout your day, no matter, you know, if you're on your way to work, if you're at work, if you're, you know, if you're at home, if you're at the store totally. through a mobile device. Um, and it's totally hands free, right? If you can yep. if you can speak, you can interact with the technology and uh, yeah, so it's it's early yeah. days, but I, it's pretty exciting. I think it's pretty real. Awesome, awesome. And then, kind of just to finish things up, um, if you think back, was there a moment in your life that kind of really opened your eyes towards kind of technology, like made you really excited when you were a kid about like a website or like a product or like what you know? You're you're an engineer, um, like. What what drew you into that? And is there something you specific? mean like technology in general, in or general. conversation? No, just technology. Like, what's like your what, a fun like early technology memory? Like, was it? I, I mean, I can yeah. remember the point that kind of set my. No, I'll tell a different story actually, which I think is, <laughs> is even better. My uh, what probably made to figure out how computer technology worked was the um, original Legend of Zelda cool. on the Nintendo, uh, 8 bit NES game, and I always wondered why you could only collect. 255 rupees. There was something magical about that number 255. <laughs> I kept seeing it in all these different video games. Um, and awesome. so, so I started to ask questions about that, got me interested in, um, in computers in general. And the whole thing kind of came full circle um, when I was, I think, a junior in college. I did an independent study where I built a Nintendo emulator. Mm -hmm. um, you found actually, the secret of the 255. Well, luckily, I would learned that. <laughs> um, yeah, the powers of two came a little bit earlier than that, but I was able to, uh, you know, set my like grab the memory image and set the, my rupee value like directly, and I felt like ah, I have now Come finally on. got my arms around the entire thing. Um, but yeah, circle. that's that's kind of what got me excited about it. Awesome, cool. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Dennis. Here.